Hey guys, this is Veron from Speaker of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today, we're just gonna draw and paint. So this is actually the, a birthday gift for my best friend. Um, I usually draw one, one of my or her characters as a gift since she isn't in the same country as I am. And I am including a lot of the thumbnailing process in this video mainly because I did a lot of thumbnails and sketching before I got to the post that I wanted to, to do and I even employed the help of my body kun figurine over there. Uh, it's the SH Figure Arts Body Kun EX model. Um, I bought this a year ago I think by now. He's probably a year old by now and I've been using him. I've been using him. I can't say I've been using him pretty often since, um, for no particular reason, I guess. Because, like, some of the poses I can already imagine in my head, um, it's only for more intricate poses or a more, uh, like, there's some more angles or I want to see it from a certain view. That's when I use him. Or when in situations like this where I don't really know what kind of pose I really want to do yet, I would fiddle around with Body Kun. Actually, I'll even have the female version. I have Body Chan here as well. But since I'm drawing a guy, I'm gonna use the male figure. Um, the sketchbook, or rather the paper we're using today, is a, is a Canson watercolor paper. But I can't tell you what GSM or what line or what what um what the weight is and all of that because i don't know <laughs> uh if you might guess by now that this sketchbook was handmade i actually made a video on my channel uh showing where i drew a cover i think for this particular sketchbook uh, i bound this using a binding hand manual binding machine you buy in bookstores and stuff I used to use it for college, but whatever, it, it became handy. Um, I bought this paper from a store called Duvier. It's I buy it from SM North, but from what I know, uh, it's also the main store. Or, yeah, there's an, an old store was in Manila. There's one in Mega Mall. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else in the Philippines, so you might want to research where you can find it. And this was the paper that my painting class or my painting prof had us use. He just told us, go to the Uvir, um, tell them the tell them to give you the Canson watercolor paper that's in a roll. And they gave us this huge ass roll of paper and you just cut it up depending on what you need for a class. So this is the excess of that. So it's pretty old. I've had this paper for maybe five years already by now. And I haven't used up all of the excess. So this was the first watercolor paper I've used. Yeah, it is. It's definitely the first watercolor paper I've used. And it was nice. I mean, it buckles a little bit. So I guess you have to be a bit more careful with the water. Or when you use it, you want to tape it down to your desk. Instead of having it in a binder like this. Because it does buckle when it's loose like this. To keep the paper flat, I had to weigh it down with books and notebooks while it was drying so that it wouldn't warp. Um, but it is a good beginner's paper. It's not too expensive from what I remember and you get a lot out of that huge roll of paper. This sketchbook came from... I think it was one roll. So I have maybe 15, I think, pages of, of sketchbook paper to use and I haven't really finished it all. I mean, this is the fourth drawing in the sketchbook. Um, yeah, you get a lot out of it for, for the price. From what I remember, it was not too wallet breaking. <laughs> so what I, do, what I can tell you is what it feels like. So as I've said, it's a pretty thin paper. It's not, I don't think it's 300 GSM. It's not thick. As I said, it does buckle a little bit when you work on it, so using tape or pressing it down would be ideal. Um, I can't tell you if it's cold or hot pressed, mainly because um, it's not super smooth like the Fabriano hot pressed paper that I've tried or that I own, but it's not like 
the code pressed either that has really defined pockets of um I don't know what to call it. There's no really, really defined indentations where you know the water will pool there. It's like in this middle ground between hot press and cold press where it's um it has texture so it's not super smooth but it's not super reworkable either. So I'd say it's hot press but it has it has texture on it. That's what I can kind of gather just based on touch and how the paint interacts with it. Um, what else can I tell you about it? <laughs> because it was in the roll, I had to um, roll it in the opposite direction so that it, w it wouldn't curve when I would work on it. And I think it worked pretty well. I mean, now it's not curved anymore. But as you can see, the pages aren't really finely cut, mainly because I just used my guillotine cutter and of course since it's a, such a huge paper I had to fold it in half first and then cut it with scissors and then cut that half in scissors before I managed to use the guillotine to start squaring the edges a bit but that still didn't give me a really fine edge so it's a really <laughs> shoddy shoddy watercolor notebook but I mean it's it's okay I guess <laughs> So the character we're drawing right now is my character actually. He is a dragon guy <laughs> and um, he's the one that my best friend sort of requested for her birthday so I drew him uh, and I, I sent it over to her. So this guy, as you, I guess you can guess by now, is a red dragon. Uh, he has red hair, red scales. He does have wings though. I. I sometimes get lazy drawing wings, or I don't like having to draw wings because it covers up so much space, especially in a back view can a back view like this. So I tend not to draw them. Um, yes, I say sapphire, but I don't think it's particularly sapphire blue eyes. I think it's a bit lighter, a bit of a lighter color. Uh, I just need to find a better description for it, I guess. But he does have bl light blue eyes, and he's a bit of a goody two shoes type character he's a knight dragon knight so he's a bit of a he's a bit straight laced i think um yeah that's that's cal um actually his name is excalion uh, i have to decide on his last name since it used to be different and it was different from his brother's last name but they were supposed to be related by blood and that was just me being a kid and not really paying attention to all of those kinds of things so I need to rework his last name and properly give him the last his last name but I think you guessed by now given how much I love fate um, that his name is slightly based off of Excalibur <laughs> so I got the Excal, Excal part and then changed the ending part a little bit why I gave him that name I have no idea <laughs> I really have no idea. Um, I guess I just liked it. I just really like that name, I guess. And then I implemented it into my character. And I, I guess I really wanted a character whose nickname was Cal. And I really couldn't think of, of a a name that would give me that. At the time, I couldn't think of a name that would give me that nickname. So, there you have it. Excalion. <laughs> And okay, I'm gonna admit that I may or may not. No, I'll admit it. I may have been influenced by fate because I think at the time of his creation, I might have already watched the Studio Dean Fate Stay Night anime by that point. So I probably got that from there as well. So the watercolors we're using, if you've been watching my channel for a long time or if you've been watching a lot of. Um, art YouTubers, you would already know what this, but it's the Sakura Koi watercolor travel set. Uh, this is the 30... I can't remember. I think this is th the 30 set. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it is the 30 set. Woo! Multiplication! <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a 30 set. It's a travel set, so it comes with a water brush and a sponge over to the side, which I don't use anymore. 
because it got stained and I need to wash it. So I use paper to like wipe off my brush for now. It also comes with the Mexican pan on top. I bring this a lot. I actually use it a lot even when I'm not traveling as you can see. Uh, mainly because I really love the vib the vibrancy of the colors. And when I compare it to, to my Reeves watercolors, uh, my Reeves suddenly look a lot more dull and dimmed. So I've been using it even for non-traveling work. And I mean, the pan is re I think the pan is pretty deep and the colors are so vibrant that I feel like I don't think I'll be hitting pan anytime soon. Especially given that I don't draw every day and drawing is not my job. So it's not, you know, super beaten up to the core. We're also using the Pima Confections watercolor set and I have the complexion set uh, mainly because I have a hard time mixing skin tone with the Sakura Koi watercolors. I mean, I can if I tried, but it's a lot easier to mix, obviously, with tube paints. And I didn't want to deal with having to try to mix the right color every time with the pan paints, so I just bought this set. And it gives me a chance to use more colors, deeper colors, to you know, increase the variety of my characters and not just always stick to this pale, peachy skin tone. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm adding a violet to the more reddish parts to create more depth. Um, that's mainly because there are blues and purples in the piece, so it would really tie in together and not make the parts look disconnected or too flat. So that's that. So now I'm overlaying the red that I used earlier for his tail on top of the purple um, shadow so that it it's like slightly under, the shadow is under the red part so the red part is still more prominent and the shadow just sort of blends into it and it makes the piece a lot more cohesive I think. I mean that's, uh, this is a technique I learned in... Um, in fine arts or in high, in art school, I guess. I can't really say it's art school because it's, it's a course in a university and it's information design and it just had a class on fine arts. But this was a technique I learned there that um, or when you were painting trees and the buildings in my university, um, you usually have a brick, uh, a brick exterior. So he had us do the shadows first. So we started our pieces off with a more reddish, greenish, brownish color. And then we put like the green of the leaves on top. So the the brownish color wasn't super prominent and the green on top sort of masks it but blends it in together with it. So there's this really nice depth perception to it. And I've been using that technique a lot and I feel like I should do a lot more landscapes and backgrounds and life studies because that's that is where that, that technique would come in a lot handy and also uh, it would just practice that skill a lot more
So now we're adding in some yellow uh, highlights to the piece so that it ties in with the background. And it doesn't look like I just drew the background because I didn't know how to, know how to draw backgrounds. I mean, that's sort of the truth, but... <laughs> so I'm just trying to, trying to tie everything together and make the piece look like one piece. So, we are nearing the end of the video. We will be jumping into the preview soon. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know that this wasn't anything super um, different or it wasn't a fan art. But still, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. And if you like this type of content, please consider liking the video or even subscribing to my channel. My phone just got a message! Oh man! Anyway, please um, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Event Art. I'm not gonna cut that out anymore. I am too lazy to re-record everything. And I'll see you around.